everybody. I am so delighted to introduce Chantelle King, who is a photographer, obviously, and has work exhibited upstairs, selected upstairs. So um, Chantelle's based in London. She has a special focus on beauty and portraiture. She is passionate about creating visual stories with a cinematic edge. Her work has a beautiful crossover from soft and gentle to bold and dynamic. Her work is beautifully diverse, capturing people from different backgrounds and cultures. Chantel loves experimenting, playing with different lighting techniques and styles. She has commissions that include shoots for Revolution Beauty, Arte Dual Beauty, Stylist Grazia, Hunger, Tush and Schoen magazines and her portfolio also features portraiture for titles such as The Guardian Saturday, The Sunday Times magazine and The Old Vic. And her series that has been selected upstairs is called Synthesis. So we will have questions at the end, the last five minutes. So um, over to you, John Tuck. Hi everyone, um, thanks for coming. It's nice to see that it's a good turnout. I thought there might be five people, but <laughs> it's good that you're more than five. Um, yeah, so today I just wanted to start off with a little introduction about me, about my history and how I got into photography. Then I'll have a little bit about my work and then I'll end with my project. Um, my project was one at the start of lockdown and actually involved a lot of people. So when I was uh, preparing for this presentation, I kind of realised that there was a lot I had to say about it, which is great. I have loads of like, references, which I'm keen to show you, as well as a little behind the scenes video, which I'll also show as well, of the actual shoot day, which I think is always nice for people as well to see. But this is the final images, but how did we get to that stage? So my little clicker. <laughs> cool, so yeah, a bit about me. Um, as um, Karen lovely stated, I am London based. Um, I do have a special focus on beauty and portraiture within my work. I love photographing people, I love skin, I love the realness of Cupid, making them pause as they are, minimal retouching, seeing the moles, if they have a nose ring or any special things that they love about that person, it's all about them. That's what I love to focus on. Um, <coughs> so, a little bit about my journey. Um, I actually studied graphic design at uni and when I finished uni I was like, I touched on photography and I was like I wanted to do <laughs> photography, but rather photography or bookmaking because I also really enjoyed making books and kind of using, putting, putting stories together and visual stories and seeing how that came. But I was very fortunate when I started that I contacted two photographers and they were keen to take me on under their wings. So I worked with them for about six months like interning, I knew nothing about photography, I had no idea about cameras, lights, what was involved, so I literally was like a sponge trying to soak everything up. And it was very eye-opening for me as well because I just didn't realise, like, when I was growing up, I didn't think that, think too much about photography as a, as a job, or that you could do that as a job really, I didn't really think about that. And so when I started to explore more, and was messaging other photographers and looking at their work, it was really fascinating and interesting to see the processes and the passion behind all of that. So I shadowed loads of photographers and I just kind of had my notebook with me. I was one of those with the notebook and I took all the notes and asked them those questions because I was so eager to learn and I was so eager to know about it. And I just kind of assisted from there. Um, I worked with them on shoots, I helped behind the scenes, so making those lovely phone calls to people and making note, notes and just um, understanding a bit more about the industry. And the more experience I got, the more other people that I got to work with as well, and that kind of increased, which was great. Um, you know, when you're assisting, especially when you start, it's very tough, so I did work in the bars in the evenings. Because you know you can't you can't dip. <laughs> it's really hard, and then you wait. Then you're constantly chasing people for money. But I understood that I didn't at that starting point. I didn't really have that experience, so I knew that for me to grow was to do those kind of free days here and there. And yeah, so then I worked in the bars. This is stuff I'm living. And then from there, I spoke to people and said work in studios as well. So I worked in studio assisting, and then I did more um, photographic assisting. 
And then I was very fortunate to work with a photographer whose name is Matthew Shea, I don't know if you've heard of him, but his specialist is still life and beauty and accessories and drinks. And he had a very wide range, so I learned so much from him. So I worked with him for about nine years, which is one of those strange things is actually when you start working with someone, you don't realise how long it is until you count the years on your fingers. And then you're like, oh my gosh, actually, I've been working with this person for so long. But it didn't feel that way because we became, as you say, like a husband and wife kind of, you know, <laughs> when you work with someone for so long, you kind of do everything for them. But when I worked with him, I didn't only assist him, I also took care of his business. I he had his own studio, so I managed his studio. I did all those elements and I learned so much. And I think it's really helped me now because when you're assisting someone on set, you understand about the lighting, but actually it's the business that's just as important and sometimes more important because if you don't know how to market yourself and then everything else is a lot harder and a lot of it is about self-promotion as well. And similar to what Joe was saying, but having those um, projects which are passion projects as well as your own projects that you get commissioned for and kind of intertwine with the two. So from there, I decided, okay, I want to shoot for myself. It's been a long time working with someone else. And that's how I do it. So actually, um, even though I've been in the industry for over 13 years, which is for me, yeah, it's a long time, but it's actually, as a photographer, since the start of the pandemic, weirdly enough, um, so about just over three years. So not very long as a full-time photographer, but obviously all the knowledge that I built over the years, just, you know, you are a photographer even if you feel like you're not because you're learning and you're like a sponge sucking in all the information in. So this is, I want to showcase some of my work. Um, so this one is called Fine Lines and I wanted to, as again, I love to, my beauty is kind of a cross between beauty and portraiture in a way because I'm all about trying to photograph the actual model in a way and really bringing them to light. I wanted to shoot this as a black and white shoot and I like the idea of using white makeup on the black and black model in black and white. So again, it's just really showcasing her natural beauty and I love like the macro shots and all about zooming in and making those close shots very interesting, which is what I love this shot about. And this is another recent project I did. And again, it's all about, for me, as I mentioned before, I love skin. <laughs> so most of my work is very macro, very close up on the skin, like keeping all those details. And a lot of my recent projects as well, I wanted to hone in on all body types, all skin types, all different, all different skin colours. Um, so again, this model's super stunning. So we wanted it to be very dewy and just really just capture her. And this was another project that I did where, again, it's just a macro shot um, on the eyes. And for this project, we actually photographed nine different models with different eye shapes, different skin tones, and we wanted to have really beautiful um, eye details. I worked with this amazing makeup artist called Joey Choi, and she's just incredible at making bold colours and statements. I like working with makeup artists who aren't afraid to be playful. And that's what I think it's going to create. So I've only got this image up for this presentation, but if you look at my website, I've got more from this series as well. Um, this is another project um, that I did. And um, for this one, I wanted to film a sort of Hollywood glam. And again, this is Joey's beautiful makeup, very colourful, very playful. And we wanted to use like a spotlight to feel like very old school Hollywood, which I love. And again, I love when I'm shooting, I always try to think about shooting different skin tones. So I wanted to embody that in my work. And again, as I said, I love playing with lighting and trying to experiment as much as I can. So it's not all the same style. And this is another project I shot. Um, this is called Art Glass. And for this project, um, I sh actually shot through glass vases. So I worked with this art director, I went to her house, this is during lockdown, and she had all these amazing vases in her house, like different colours all around. And I was like, this is so interesting to shoot. And I know many other brilliant photographers have done similar projects where 
they shot food glasses or they've used them within the shots to create that kind of beautiful perspective. But yeah, for this one, I just wanted to, I literally just held the, the vase in front of the lens and kind of being playful. It's one of those that you can get, literally spend hours just doing because every angle that you move the vase, you get a different type of look and perspective. So I had loads of beautiful images, but these are two which I particularly love. And this was another shoot again. I love this beacon, all the beautiful details. This is very minimal retouching on the models. Keeping the beautiful beauty marks. I just love showing skin. I'm all about skin, as I mentioned before. And this is a beautiful commission shoot that I did with Michaela Cole. This is for the BFI um, challenge with BMW, and she was. Um, this was last year, and they picked select five filmmakers, and she kind of um, helped them with their projects. And one of those got selected as a winner. So this was the main sort of campaign shot that was shown in publications um, in the Sun magazine, in GQ magazine, in the Times magazine, um, all last year. So this is a fairly beautiful project to be part of. Cool. And so now I'm just going to quickly touch on um, about my synthesis beauty series and how it kind of started, how it started and how it went from there. So for this project, um, a friend of mine, the hairstylist, Chris Begat, came to me and said he wanted to do a project that was um, about shooting different models and fusing them together. And I was like, oh, I've seen that kind of before, like the Benton ads or whatever. And in fact, I didn't want it necessarily to be that way. I wanted to try and take it further. So um, a dear friend of mine, Joe O'Handen, who actually created the collages, I approached her and I said, this project but I really need another eye or another touch just to make it as it is and so we came together and we created these sort of mood boards and so the idea is we were sort of inspired by Dali <coughs> and we wanted to just create some unique um, collages infusing the model portraits plants materials things that were found to create this image so these are further more of the sort of researches that we had, just thinking about different ways of infusing different collages. So these are found works that we loved, and also the colours which I love meshing together. So with the planning, so once we sort of finalise our mood boards, our whole idea is okay, we need to get a team together. So we got a maker cousin Joey Troy who is with this was the first project that I worked with Joey in and so we've got this lovely long term relationship after this that we've we've kept on. And um, we worked with Alessandra who did the styling. So for this shoot we wanted to get five to six models and varying skin tones and features. And then this was a challenge as you can imagine, because it's a personal project, it's always harder to get all the models that you want because sometimes they decide that they're not going to be available, so two of our models actually pulled out last minute, but we made it work, as you do on a personal project sometimes. It doesn't always go smooth. That's when you're not paying people, you know, another job comes up. That's just how it is. And so um, we shot this over two days. Um, it was a really fun project to be part of. Um, I, really, I really loved it. And so for the project, everyone obviously, uh, we discussed what the project was about, and everyone came together with their own references. So these were like the head references that Chris came together with for each of the models. Um, for the hair, we wanted to feel very sculptural and just kind of have this very um, interesting look, like as you can see with some of the hair details. Rather than just having like the regular, regular hair stuff, we wanted to feel like it was part of the piece. And these are more references that we had some of the models. Um, I didn't put these together, I would not stretch the image in that way. It's kind of bugging me a little bit that like, images are stretched, but anyway, it's not, it's not clear, it's not those. Um, lovely makeup artist has put these together to make up references. So, this um, artist is called Paul Wonderbridge, which I really love his style. So, when you're working in collaboration with a team, everyone is thinking of how can I put my stamp on it, but then equally as a photographer, you want to make sure you bring those ideas together but still make it cohesive as one piece. So it's my job to make sure that everything comes together but 
I want everyone else to feel like it's part of their project as well. So yeah, for the shoot day, um, I will show you the behind the scenes video once I finish this, so I won't go for very long, and then I'll discuss, then you can see kind of how it all came together. Um, so creating the collages, so as I mentioned, at the start of this project, this was in February 2020, so it's literally at the start of the pandemic when it kind of happened. So unfortunately, I wanted to kind of be with Joe so we could work with the collages together, but because of lockdown, we couldn't work in the same area. So um, me and Joe were constantly messaging each other, calling each other, trying to work how it could work, how, how kind of working together. So um, I will do the edit initially, then I will send them to her, and she will start piecing them together. So what she did was, from the images, she would take photocopies, uh, black and white and colour photocopies, and then she'd be like ripping them together, um, taking images of the still lives, because on the day we shot pictures of the portraits as well as still lives. So we would kind of create these little details and sculptures together and take pictures of those, which we'll use in the images as well. And it was, it was, it was really a fun playful project because we didn't want it just to be portraits. We're like, what can we do with this? So then we really sort of were really playful. And then what she did after that is once she put the collages together, she would show me what the collages were, and then they, they will be photographed, which we'll show in the next one. So this was us pairing the images together. So from the shoot, we these are the, the shots and then the still lives, and then we're like, what could possibly work together? So this is us sort of starting to play, play around and see how it could work. And then these are like the collage options till we got to the final one. So you can kind of see the process of us thinking, what, how could we make this work? It was actually really cool because I forgot that I had these until this project came about, and then I was looking through my phone and finding these like a whatsapp image and I was like this is really cool to show because I think like anything you want to see the process and this is what I loved about it and this was another option as well and the ones in the, the black border is the final one and these are just kind of, a kind of process to get to that and I love again seeing all the details I love it when you can see an overlay on an image, it's still that you can touch it. And again, there's something really cool, which is really cool about it, which I loved. And these are some other options, which we didn't explore, but I'm really keen to go back actually, because you know there's some projects where you're like, I'd love to go back and kind of see where else I can take it. And again, these are ones I found, and so this is actually really cool. <laughs> so I might go back to Joe and say, let's do like maybe a part two of this project. And maybe even like, I love this. This is, I don't know, it's just so, so cool. So yeah, I think I'm thinking definitely to come back and explore it a bit more. And this one in the middle with the thing with the eye, this is very yeah, so, so cool. So yeah, so this is about the project, the title we came up with, Synthesis. So we wanted to feel very natural. And the whole thing was combining different elements to create one. And that's why we came up with word synthesis. And yeah, so it's basically we said it was just collages that were created using portraits and paper, plants, and fabric, and making it make it one. So that's how we came up with the name synthesis. So this is these are um, there are four images that were chosen for the exhibition. So these are the main four images from the shoot. So these two. And then I've also featured some others' images from the shoot as well. Which I love. And again, it's just that I love here the black and white, the colour, the fusion of the natural with the, the hair. Like this, there is like this hair that was you, but the hairstyle is prepared for one of the shots. And we just kind of put it on the front of this, which I just love. Again, it's just like when you have all these different pieces and you make it one, it just create something so completely different that you wouldn't expect it. Again, like these, I think that Joe did an incredible work of making these and putting them together. But as anything, it's all about this collaboration and working. Sometimes, you know, it's it's so nice when you 
work with someone else because it's not always just about your project. And I think sometimes it can just make it bigger. I think it's nice just to not think about that you have to, you're the photographer, you have to be the only person involved. A lot of times projects are sort of a team effort. And it is a team effort anyway when you've got from the collaborator, from the commissioner, from the art director, from all the other people that's involved making it to what it is. Cool, and I'll quickly show you the behind the scenes video now, just so you can see that's in action. Thank you so much.